Um, hello friends, uh, my name is Dr. Sunil Bhatt. I am the Director and Clinical Lead of uh, Pediatric Hematology Oncology and Bone Marrow Transplant um, at the Majumdar Shah Medical Center, Narana Health City, Bangalore. I have been coming to you with some series of videos on thalassemia major because as I said earlier, it is one of a very significant, very important um, you know, conditions which we deal in our practice and is quite relevant um, in our country. Uh, we have discussed till, till now a couple of aspects of thalassemia major in my previous videos. Um, what I am going to discuss today with you is um, how can we prevent thalassemia major. So we have been talking about looking after children with thalassemia major which is of course an important aspect. Um, the children who have been born with thalassemia major, beta thalassemia major, how do we look after them and we have got you know various things we have been discussing and we keep on discussing. But I think the most important element in the whole thalassemia um, scenario is that how do we prevent thalassemia major? Can we prevent it first of all? Yes, we can prevent thalassemia major. Um, as I discussed you know, earlier on, it's a, it's a genetic disease and it comes from our parents. Uh, parents are carriers of this disease and when they marry, there's a 25% chance that their child can have thalassemia major. But it's not 100%. That means only 25% of the times their child may have thalassemia major. There's 75% of the times the th baby is either normal or a thalassemia carrier, which is, of course, for all practical purposes, also a normal uh, person in the society. Now, how can we prevent this? Now, the preventive strategies I kind of divide into two categories. One is prevention in the whole community or in the whole society. And the second is prevention in the family where the uh, where where one child with thalassemia has been born it's very you know disheartening and sometimes very sad to see you know a family having two three four children with thalassemia major born in the same family which is it's, it's very sad now it will take them one by one so first in a family who has already had a thalassemia major born in their in their in their family what can we do to prevent second third birth with thalassemia major it's extremely simple because by now we know already that the, both the parents are carriers and both the carriers are the carriers of beta thalassemia major gene. Now, in the next pregnancies, we need to prevent it. As I said, 75% chances the next baby may be normal, but there's 25% chance that the th next baby may also have thalassemia major. So how can we prevent it? We can prevent it by two different techniques or two different me methodologies. One is something called as pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. What happens in pre-implantation genetic diagnosis is that mothers and fathers, so ova and sperm are, there's, there's, there's a fertilization which is done outside in the lab. So you create few embryos, you, you generate few embryos from this fertilization. Now you test these embryos in the lab and see which embryo does not have thalassemia major, does not have both the genes which are abnormal only the embryo which either is normal that means both the beta genes are normal or there's one gene normal which is one is abnormal which is like a carrier so these are the embryos which are put back in the mother's womb through something called as ivf in vitro fertilization and we know that this embryo has been tested already does not have thalassemia major and we have put in the mother's womb and then it grows in the mother's womb and leads to a normal pregnancy and the baby which is born we know already that doesn't have thalassemia major so that's one technique pre-implantation genetic diagnosis now the second technique is something called as chorionic villus sampling that means the mother has had a natural pregnancy when the pregnancy is 11 12 weeks at that point of time we take a small tissue from the from the from the new pregnancy or from the um, fr from the new fetus and check it from the that, that's called as chorionic villus and we check it for thalassemia major genes if there are both the genes in that chorionic villus sample that means the baby is also having thalassemia major and we can we have an option of medical termination of pregnancy or abortion we have an option of that if the family wishes to do so and if the gene is not there both the genes are not abnormal it's a carrier or thalassemia minor or it is abnormal then we continue the pregnancy so i what i discussed with you is two techniques pre implantation genetic diagnosis and coronular sampling both these techniques we can find out whether the next baby which this couple is having 
has got thalassemia major or not. And if there's a thalassemia major, you know, in the second technique, we have an option of um, term, medical termination pregnancy. In the first technique, we, we implant only that embryo in the mother's womb through IVF, which is normal and doesn't have thalassemia major. So that's one aspect of how to prevent thalassemia birth in the same family who has already had a baby with thalassemia major. Now come to the second aspect of how to prevent the first baby with thalassemia major or how do we look in the community or the society at large and prevent thalassemia majors from, from being born. Again, for this, I kind of divide it into two categories. One is that one is called as targeted screening. That means the patients who are already having thalassemia major, we look at their families and extended families because it's a genetic disease and the other family members, extended family members may be carrying the disease. So we look at other members in the extended families from the particular patient and see if, if, if there are other carriers in that extended family and we then counsel them, advise them and guide them. That is one methodology. The second is what's called as population-based screening. That means we check people, especially uh, you know, uh, uh, the population which is either young, that means they're in the colleges, premarital, before marriage, and, and you know, those who are planning pregnancies, planning families, and planning marriage. So this is the second aspect of looking at the thalassemia minor status in, in this extended population. And it can be done by a very simple technique or a simple blood test called HP electrophoresis, which tells us whether these normal looking people have thalassemia carrier or not. And this can be done in schools, in colleges, in, 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 in offices, you know, in, 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 pay, in people who are planning to marry, patients planning to have children who are already married, in all these we can do it. And we see what is the status of the couple or what is the status of that person who you have tested. If they're minor, we need to educate them and tell them when you get married, you need to check the status of your, of your spouse. And if the couple is already married, if one of them is abnormal, other is normal, it doesn't matter. Now nothing is going to happen. But if both of them are carriers, then we need to counsel them and tell them you need to go when you have babies or pregnancies, you need to take one of these techniques which we discussed as preimplantation genetic diagnosis or a coronavirus sampling as a technique, right? So, so friends, one of the very important aspects, which is a, probably a message to my gynecological colleagues, is that. Uh, Always the couple, you know, especially when they're young and they're having, you know, they will always get a gynecologist when the mother has conceived. That gives us a very, very wonderful opportunity for testing the couple for, for, for thalassemia major. And as I said, it's a very simple blood test. It takes two to three days for the report to come and you can tell whether the couple is thalassemia minor or not. So my, my request, my message to all the gynecological colleagues is that if you could at the first antenatal check, Check the electrophoresis of, of the, both the mother and the father and see if they're thalassemia minor or not. If they're not having it, we'll forget about it. If they're having, both of them are having it, then we can, we can offer them this antenatal testing or testing before, you know, uh, by, by the methodology of coronary sampling or antenatal testing and we can prevent thalassemia measures being born into the community. So friends, thalassemia is preventable and, you know, let us aim at making India thalassemia free. And that is only going to happen with when all of us join hands, doctors, patients and their caregivers. Um, and we have got wonderful organizations, you know, working for thalassemia, especially there are parent organizations and societies all over the country. Um, we need help of other medical fraternity, especially the gynecologists. And of course, we need the help of the establishment or the political establishment or the administration and the governments to make this as a, as a, as a priority uh, program for the country and also implement it you know, quite effectively at the grassroots level so that we can get rid of this deadly menace from our country. So thank you very much.